Well, it is about 4.45, just finished milking. Had a little surprise guest this morning. We have the normal three. We have baby Kristoff and Elsa and Allie. All of a sudden, out of the fence comes Josie. So I don't know if Josie was out all night. I'm gonna go check the fence. Yeah, Elsa's not too fond of her. I'm gonna go check the fence and make sure she didn't get out or bust the fence. None of the other cows are out. So she comes running through when we go to milk, we have a little opening right there at a, a, kind of a, a cattle gate that we have uh, for calves to, or excuse me, for cows to, to, like a run going into trailers and things. So she came through that. So I don't know. I don't know where she come from. So I'm going to go check the gates right quick. Uh, these two are doing great. Allie didn't milk as much because I think she was nervous with, with the baby out. And then Elsa, she's getting drained by her baby. So I'm just start separating them at night. So. Never know what's gonna go on on the homestead. All of a sudden, Josie runs out and she's been out all night. So I don't know where she's been. So I gotta find out and see if I need a mend a fence. So let's see, we've got two three gallon jugs. Let's see how much milk we got this morning. Like I said, this has probably been the best morning that we've ever had that both cows built well. Uh, no craziness with their calves. I wish every morning could be like this because uh, I tell you my religion and my spiritual walk would be so much better <laughs> because they stress me out sometimes. So I'm uh, thankful that it went well this morning. So let's see how much we got, okay? Okay, so we got about 2.6, 2.7 in here. We didn't want to go to the very top. This would get so heavy, and plus, uh, when it gets this high, it just swishes around. So, got about 2.7, 2.8 right there. This is a this is the gallon line right here. So it's above a gallon. So probably about 1.1, 1.2 here. So together, you're looking right at four gallons. Uh, so I'm real pleased with that. Um, it might be, you know, three and a half to four somewhere around there. So very pleased. First morning, we just milked them and let both milks mix because you know I, I guess we're gonna be making a lot of a lot of goods today misty is she made butter yesterday she's planning on making butter this morning um and i love fresh biscuits with fresh cream so i'm hoping we have some fresh biscuits this morning so other than our two dairy cows really everything else is pretty much all grass fed they don't really get grain at all even alfalfa so just to give them a little treat I we'll gave him some grain, and man, Daddy O loves it. Don't you, buddy? Don't you? There's Beauty over there. Beauty is just gonna have a baby. She's supposed to calf uh, about two months. Then we got Ike. Of course, you're starting to see Josie starting to eat a little, little feed, which is good. And then the baby's just hanging out somewhere behind him over there. Let's see if I can find him. There he is. It is actually just a storm here. I feel like we've just we're gonna have to buy a boat to work in our yard because it's just a mud hole. We've got to get these pig out of its mud, especially the little pigs over here. So, like we've talked about, we're gonna build this as a run. This is the chicken, kind of the new chicken area and pig area that we were gonna build for the bees for planting buckwheat and things like that. But remember, we talked about taking this fence on out to encapsulate this wet spot that basically the uh, 
broilers were in. So we're gonna redesign this fence a little bit, let the chickens still have some breathing room outside with the little net, uh, the shocker knot, premier shocker knot fence that I'll, I'll post down here. They'll keep it and that way they can get out of their coop too because it's been wet and then take this fence and make it simply for the pigs now. So we need some good tilling to go on so it's time to make sure the pigs are ready to move and do some work, not just eat. So we've got to get this net, the shocker knot, around the hen house so that way they still have room to come around and utilize what they want to utilize at the same time. That way I can take this fence and strictly make it for the pigs um, because I think they will enjoy it to get out of the mud and let that area rest. We're going to put some hay and some extra bedding in there, some bark. That way that area could be, you know, healing up for a little bit and they'll move out to the place they need to move out to to start some gardens, some more gardens. As if we need more, we always need more. Okay, so we just got the black netting, the shocker knot, just around the hen house. It isn't terrible. I mean, it's not really stretched out like it's supposed to. Here, the pigs are going crazy. They think I'm supposed to feed them. But now we can take our white chicken net fence up. And again, it's hard to do with one hand. We're going to try. Remember, take it and make sure you're laying it down so you're not getting it tangled up. Take one piece at a time. So we're going to go ahead and get it done. And that way we can slide it back. Get these pigs out here where they could just tear up the ground and not be that loud. All right, when I set one of these up, I get it tight on one side, just like this, just like I want it. And then from there, since I'm having to readjust, I get very loose. The reason I do that is because the whole purpose is I just want to make sure that I get to the other side without having to retake it back up. So I've gotten to the other side. Now I'll go back and actually pull it tight use this as a pull corner that way everything right here stays tight use this as a pull corner to keep this tight and gets all this tight going towards this way too so it's going to fit perfect it's just going to make their run come all the way out here now we've got some wetness and some fertilization already right here this was where the broilers were so it's got some good foundation but you see it's got a lot of grass still i need this broken down because this is going to be our new fall gardens for next year we're going to make some kitchen gardens close to the house and we're going to let the pigs be our tillers for it. We let the chickens already in here. The chickens have been in here, broilers and egg layers, the permaculture chickens. So now what we're going to do is let the pigs come in here and, I hate to say destroy it, but come in here and really do some major work. And, and only for a little bit because then we're going to move them over one more set right by the raised beds. And you see this is where the chickens were too. But it just, they're still, this right here is all manure. This right here is still beautiful green grass. So I'm going to let them till this up again all right here so we have two nice big beds right here just simply for our fall stuff uh, more brassicas in the ground we have you know we planted our our hugaculture bed excuse this mess we had a big storm and we have been working on the back porch so that's why all this junk's out here so i hate mess so sorry about that this is where the bachelor pad was this is where the the fall stuff is now but you see that's just not a lot of growing there our greens are you know way over here behind the barn but I want more things growing by the house that's not so, you know, when it's 20 degrees, we don't have to come out and do row covers way over there for brassicas. So when only we're gonna grow lettuces and things like this in the hugaculture beds, we're just gonna redo these two beds for uh, more brassicas and more herbs, perennials. And then we'll have these two spots for more winter harvest. Because again, as it gets cold, the last thing I'll do is be way over there adjusting silage tarps. So I wanna have some spots close here to pick and even misty pick and then that way we can go back inside real quick so let's get this fence tightened first then what we'll do we're going to take down that uh that one t post right here has got some uh right there has got a zip ties on it we'll pop that down and let those pigs come on out they'll jump over that little ledge uh if they don't then we'll run them back through but they they usually can get over that ledge pretty quick especially if they know there's feed here so <laughs> then they, they do i've got tons of milk i'm gonna be able to give them too so i'm gonna get some some feed and some milk and kind of pour all through here and they're gonna do their job you'll you'll be surprised in one day we'll come back and show you what this looks like and then in two days we'll probably move them to this next side now we've got the net up looks great uh, it's a little gotta get a little tighter over there because of course that's where i'm going in and where i'm gonna get the pigs out but other than that the net is really tight if you stand back you can see it's basically the width of where they're at huh, other than my t-post just fell uh, that's the only thing I got left to do is actually get the T-post in the ground, the ground new ride in the ground, and then get the charger on, and then I'm going to let them have have their way. So let's get the uh, mall hammer, get those drills in, 
and then that way we can get these pigs moved out of their wet spot we can treat it we're gonna put some de all in there uh, kind of get some deep bedding in there let it rest because again another big storm's coming in so we need to let it let it rest get them out of there and then also we'll get some some more things on the American guinea hogs as well look at our broccoli how good it's doing it's starting to really put out some florets very pleased with that some lettuce doing well very pleased with that got broccoli on every one of those man that's what i'm talking about we love broccoli so we get excited we've never been really good at growing broccoli but this year is the year for broccoli not only can they be bacon they can be our workers too so we want to be bacon and workers let's see if we can get that back okay now we got that back we'll kind of run them over here and see if we can get some feed to them see if they learn to jump over if you raise pig american guinea hogs are actually really clean and and most bigger hogs are actually pretty clean hogs it's kind of funny to say but when it comes to these hogs they're crazy and they make a mess of everything they touch so we got to wash it out so let's see if they can jump some of them are looking to jump now look oh, there goes one <laughs> let's see if the other ones can come they're trying to figure it out there goes the second one told you when they're curious they'll jump look three four all right let's see if the runt can do it the last one he's always the last one all right, I'm going to get on out so I can get this charger on. And that way, he can light them up when they touch it. Bam. Bam. Okay, so last thing of the day, uh, we've got to do two more chores and that'll kind of finish us up for the day. We've got to tighten this net, the shocker knot back around here, open them back up so that way they have free rain around here. So it's just moving one post at a time because we don't want to take the whole net up. And then we're going to take and cover these beds that we have planted, the garlic, the onion, and the secondary onion with carrots. Our cat keeps squirrels out, but our cat thinks this is one big litter box and we don't need cat fertilization by any means. So we're going to go ahead and put a net over these and that way that will hinder the cat from using them because we've got great compost here great fertilization so now we just need to see some things grow so i don't need uh you know i don't need um a cat in them so that's the only two things left and we're gonna finish up for the day all right we've got the, the net around it now this is not gonna be lit the whole purpose of this is just give them some breathing room out of their coop their coop is not that bad but again, it just needs to rest because ultimately we're going to take that out and it'll be compost and, and chicken fertilization to put on the garden. So I don't need them just miserable in their own filth. So basically we're going to let them kind of come out here and just work some of this grass and eat what they want. See how muddy it still is just because of the ground. But we're going to let them just work around these two hen houses just because. Uh, and no, no rhyme or reason, but just uh, makes sense to give them a break out of where they're at. So we just finished this net last thing we've got to do is put the covers over those beds for you know your chickens are spoiled when they have their own little courtyard <laughs> so they got the chicken the main hen house the pullet house and then now they got a whole walkway around the place so got their own personal fenced in gated community now for the day we've got this netting on there this is basically just what they call like a rabbit or deer netting yeah, it's no, it's just plastic. Uh, I'll leave a link to it down below too. Thank you again for watching today. I hope you enjoy our content. We try to enjoy a little vlogging, a little how-to, a little why we do, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Share the Max with your friends. We're so close to uh, our next goal of 2,000 subscribers. Uh, 
that doesn't seem like a lot to a lot but man it means the world to me so thank you for all the ones that watch us and keep up with us and comment it means the world to us so uh, keep doing what you're doing thank you so much god bless you happy homesteading y'all